Hi, I'm Bruce. Uh, I've been acting now for uh, 55, maybe 56 years now. Uh, that's officially, I think, actually, I was always an actor, even as a kid. Because everyone I knew as a kid was crazy, so that instinctive thing of trying to figure out how they were functioning was that observation of their brains, and so that you could kind of, so I was imitating people very early on, just to kind of understand what it was that caused them to be the way they were, and I think that instinct is kind of what I talk about, and what I do as an actor myself, and also what I teach. There's a lot of uh, methods out there which have a lot of steps, and I think sometimes uh, that kills that uh, original thought. Some people just have an instinct for it. Some people just have it. Um, some people need class. Some people already have it. They can do it. I remember when I was at Northwestern University, I, I was coaching a lot of people, and somebody sent this kid to me. He was 19, and they sent him to me because even then, when I was still working on my degree, uh, people knew that if I looked at you, I could see what was happening and I told you the truth, which was scary to a lot of people. Well, this one guy wanted to know the truth, so he came to me and asked me to watch him. I saw his freshman scene, and um, he was good. And after the thing, I uh, uh, said, Congratulations, you were really good. And then he said, no, wait, don't go away. Let me get rid of all these people. All these people were about 35 women, all of whom, and he was gorgeous. He was 19 and really neat. He was a very gorgeous looking guy. And uh, he said, um, let's walk around the campus here. So we were walking around the campus. And uh, he said, what should I do? And... Uh, I said, about what? He said, should I stay in school or should I go to New York? Back in those days, if you were a serious actor, you went to New York to do stage, which was our goal. And uh, he said, should I go to New York or should I stay in school? I said, well, Warren, what do you want? This was Warren Bates. Warren said, I want to be a star. <laughs> I looked at him and I went, Warren, you've got all the stuff you need to be a star. Go to New York, or you could be real safe, stay here, get your degree, then get your master's degree. And he said, I'm going to New York. Like six months later, I got my degree. I'm walking down Fifth Avenue. I see Warren coming at me, he gives me a big hug. He says, Bruce, you're right, I'm a star. <laughs> and he was. Some people have it right away. I Where we pick you, you overdo. Or do for what? Pushing me, Dodie? Get your money. Sure, we will. I got $200 I'll lay on you right now. I said. Hmm? Ow! Steve. Sell your sister. Borrow it. Get it off. Yeah, well, now. Well, I need some time. A couple of days. No, two days. A couple of days. I got it. I got everything working. Come on, two days. By the way, I could say that about my son Crispin. He had it. Parents, a very interesting thing that a parent should know. Look at your kid and see what they already know. And don't try to teach them what they already know. Recognize it. Sometimes people just need some advice. They don't need that much. It's there instinctually. Ah, you look at kids who do paintings and are great, terrific stuff, until somebody starts teaching them about art. Art isn't teachable. Art is an instinct. It's inside yourself. Now, I started out as uh, an athlete. I was in a working class neighborhood. I had my first job when I was six years old. I made 60 cents a week delivering groceries. I, I, I did a job every year of my life. I delivered meat 
on a bicycle. I sold magazines door to door. I worked in a newsstand in a loop in Chicago from 9 to 13 years of age. Six bucks a week. I was rich. That was a lot of money for a kid back then. And I worked in a glass factory at 14. We didn't have child labor laws. It was great for me. It made me feel Paul. 14, 15, or 16, I worked in a, in a glass factory, ladling glass. And at night, I was on the wrestling team. We'd go to the carnival and be the shields for the wrestling concession. Sometimes a seven-foot tall guy was so scary, and there weren't enough drunks or dumb ones to go up there and challenge them. So we would pretend to be the challenger. We'd go up. We got paid sometimes a hamburger or a hot dog. We went up there and got in the ring with this guy. So I guess instinctually I was already acting, and I didn't even know it. Now, I was working out with weights because I was a good football player. Playing. I was on the city championship team in Chicago in 1949. We were the city champs. And I played uh, I, I was played on a semi-pro team. When I went to my first year of college, I was playing my college team on a Friday or Saturday, and then the pro team on a Sunday. Now, a buddy of mine that I was, I'm, all, I'm also a painter. Those were the two things. Sports and painting were the things that were going to get me out of that working class neighborhood. My buddy said, Bruce, you got a good build on me. Back then we had these Thems and those accents. I had one of those accents. I had to get rid of it. He said, you ought to, you ought to go down there and pose at the Art Institute. This is Chicago. You, know? you ought to go down and pose at the Art Institute. And I did. I was posing in our class. I, across the room was a beautiful naked woman posing for the class. And at break time, she came up to me and said, Bruce, how would you like to... And my mind was racing. And she, I'd seen her naked. She was beautiful. And she said... How would you like to be a gorilla? What the hell is that about? Well, it turned out she had a nightclub act, and she needed a guy strong enough to wear a 90-pound ape suit and throw her around for 10 minutes while she stripped in a strip club. <laughs> and the owner of the actor said, go down there and look at Bushman, the famous gorilla at the Lincoln Park Zoo. And I did. Bushman gave me my first acting lesson. I watched him. He was an elegant ape. Terrific. I watched him, like, eat a grape, you know? And he had delicacy. He was like a connoisseur of grapes. And I looked at him, and he gave me my first acting lesson. He said, think like a gorilla. I thought, wait a minute. So that's what? That's the first lesson in acting? Think the thoughts of a character. They're very simple. And I did. And I was terrific in it. Now, we went down to Florida, Tampa Bay, Florida. Back those strip clubs in those days had magicians and singers and comics. And a magician from California came up to me and he had a magic wand. He tapped me with it. He said, Bruce, you are an actor. Said, what the hell do you mean? <laughs> you are an actor. I said, what do you mean? He said, you you are an actor. You make that gorilla so believable that you ought to try acting. This guy, a singer in the club, he said, yeah, you ought to go to acting classes in New York. He was from New York. And I said, acting classes? There were classes for acting? I, I never heard such a thing. I mean, that's amazing. And he said, yeah. And I, I thought, and I still kind of do already. I kind of think if you know how to act, you already know how to act. You don't need classes. You might to get rid of all the bad classes you've had all the time, to get rid of the bad ideas that have been laid on you. So, got me thinking. The first time I consciously thought of being an actor. Now, in those days, in my working class neighborhood, saying you were going to be an actor, it was like saying, oh, I'm going to wear a dress and lipstick and stuff. It, it was considered kind of, you know, only the kind of swishy guys would do that. Us macho guys. We weren't supposed to do that because I was a secret nerd. Nobody knew that I was really smarter than I was. You know, I pretended that's why I had to deep them to those actions. Now, I got drafted for the Korean War right soon after that event. And I got there. I was there in the last six months of the war. And the Chinese were very kind. Every time they kind of shot in my direction, they never, you know, I survived the whole thing. Was great. I still like Chinese food and all that good stuff. Now, I got back to the States, and I got malaria, and I was a little bit off on my physicality, and I didn't think I, 
Anyway, I was at, went back to a college where I played football. And I saw they were casting for a play with Tennessee Williams, Camino Real. And I thought, I better read that. I think I should try out for this play to see if I could do it. And I read the play and I thought I would get a three-line part. There was a drunk who leaned out of the window and went, show me the way to go home. And I thought, yeah, that's the part I could do. I got the lead. I got the part of Kilroy. Now, I've never seen a play before. I've only seen movies. I mean, to me, actors were like Bogart, Cagney, Bogart. You know, that was, to me, the kind of acting you had to do. I think you had to be real. Now, some of these stage actors were doing some weird stuff, and I thought, what the hell do they think they're doing? And I was working on a scene with one guy, and said, have you ever thought of, like, talking to me? I said, what do you mean? I said, you know, when you talk to me, I'll listen. And when I talk to you, you'll listen. He said, how do you do that? <laughs> Next thing I know, I had eight students. That's when I first started coaching. Now I started teaching really out of self-defense to kind of get these people to look more like movie actors and more real. And uh, I continued doing that. Now the following summer, and I got great reviews in the play. Right away, I was a natural actor. And I had no problems with, you know, confidence, obviously. I just went in there. Now I did a couple things around town. I did a Wagnerian opera. I did one... A community theater group. They were the most actory people I've ever seen in my life. They were all like, they were living the drama of being actors and having affairs with everybody. It was wonderful. Now, the following summer, I heard about a summer stock company. They'd already hired their three paid actors, but they had open casting. So I slept on the porch of the theater and lived out of my car because they had open casting every week, and I got to leave every week. That was the summer I knew. I went on to Northwestern, which is where I ran into Warren, <laughs> and told him he was a star. And that is the simplicity of acting. What is acting? It's thinking the thoughts of the character, uh, having a conversation, listening, looking. And yeah, when we have conversations, sometimes other things intrude. We look there, there's a pretty girl walking over there, or somebody else is doing something interesting, or a bird flies by. It's all part of what you allow in. Acting is not what you're pushing out, it's what you're letting in. Art is not about trying to demonstrate to people. Art is about doing something that is illuminating yourself. And you can't illuminate yourself unless you're letting stuff come in and affect you and make you have an expression that you hadn't expected. I'm a painter. And when I paint, I don't care if you like I'm involved with that painting. There is a vigorous kind of experience with it. It's guttural. It's in my stomach. It's there. I'm enjoying The only time I've done bad paintings is when I've tried to please somebody else. That's the problem with most actors. They're trying to please somebody else. And sometimes it's that teacher giving you a 25, 12 step and whatever number of steps you're supposed to make to do a part. I've done hundreds of hundred plays. I did, a lot of those were in summer stock where you, I did a 20 week season one time, I did 10 weeks, 10 weeks, I did repertory, I toured, I did Broadway, I did one year run on Broadway, I did one year run off Broadway. But summer stock was really the proving ground. You get a new play and every week, five days, six days rehearsal, boom, you do it. There's no time to do steps. Think the thoughts of the character, make that guy come alive, see what that character sees, remember what the character remember, and do it. There's no time to mess around. Make it work. Every week, one week you're 18 years old, the next week you're 50. 